Hello, my little friends. You might notice that in front of me today, I have one of my animal habitat trioramas, but it's missing a big animal to sit into it. I've put a couple of cute little bitty animals in here, like these sweet little geese that are swimming in a pond, but I don't have anything big that shows exactly where I am. On the other videos, we talked about how you could also do different kinds of animal habitat trioramas. Today, I'm gonna to show you a way that you can make trash into treasure by using cardboard from boxes. And if you're like me, you've been ordering a bunch of stuff off Amazon or from anywhere else. We've been ordering off Chewy too because we gotta feed the puppies. You're also gonna need scissors and some sort of drawing utensil. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that you want to make these animals pretty big. So I'm thinking like at least the size of your hand. If you try to make these animals and they're too small, they're super, super, super hard to cut out. Don't do that to yourself. So we're actually going to make these animals in a couple of different parts. They're going to be several pieces and we're going to piece it together. It's going to be like a puzzle. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to get a piece of cardboard and have uh, an adult help you out if you want. And I'm going to start by laying down my hand. That way I can know exactly how big it's supposed to be. So I want to make the body at least that big, top to bottom. Okay, and I hope you can see those dots. I think you can. And we're just going to draw the side of the animal and artists sometimes know that as the profile. We know that we can draw animals using shapes, okay? We're going to work from head to neck to body, but this time we're not going to add the legs on yet. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I'm going to make a giraffe because that way you can see kind of what I'm doing. I'm going to sketch out the head and the head of a giraffe is kind of just like an oval and we can fix that shape in a minute. The top of the oval is almost touching that top dot. I can go ahead and add on the other things if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that quite yet. After the head comes my giraffe's big long neck and that's gonna be something like a rectangle. And then I wanna give him his body or her body and that's gonna be something like a big fat oval. And that's going to be okay, I think. If I need to change it, it's okay. I'm going to make the neck a little bit like that so that I can have a little bit more of a body. And all I have to do is erase it because artists make mistakes and this is not a big deal. Okay, so I'm going to go back and fix that head a little bit more. So the head is a little bit bigger up here and a little bit smaller down here. An oval was a good place to start, but I'm doing something that artists call refining, which means I'm making choices about which lines of my head I want to keep and which ones I want to change. Artists are really good about changing their minds. Okay, so I need to give some ears and those little thingy things on the top of his heads. A lot of people call these horns, but they're not horns. They're called ossicones, and they're made of the same kind of stuff that your ears are called cartilage. It's got some hair. I don't really need to decorate it yet. The eyes are going to go there. The nose is going to go there. Mouth is going to go there, and we know we need to add some spots. I'll worry about decorating him later, but right now I just want to get the basic shape. Did that on the legs. I know we're going to get there. Since giraffes are related to horses, I know that they have a mane and those are really the main ha -ha, parts that I've got right now. I don't really have room for a tail yet. So I'm just going to pretend like his tail is wrapping around his body. Okay. Remember legs are going to be another part. Now this is the tricky part and it's cutting it out. And when you're using your scissors, Here's the trick. You've got to open your scissors really wide. Your hands are pretty powerful, but if the power from your hands has to travel all the way down to the little bitty tips, it's really hard to cut with the tips of your scissors. The trick here is you want to put your cardboard all the way to the back of your scissors so that the power from your hand only has to travel down just a little bit. 
if you're struggling, do the best you can to cut it out. And I like to cut out kind of just a little bit quick so that I'm getting the big chunks away. But that doesn't look like a giraffe yet. So now I'm gonna go and do the smaller edges. So while I'm cutting this out, let's talk about how you can possibly decorate this um, any way you want to. You could do paint, you could do markers, you could do crayons, you could do whatever you've got. Okay, so that's not that bad. I skipped a little part up here because my scissors had a hard time turning, so I'll come back to that. cut out that whole mane in one big piece for right now. And remember as artists, we know that it's a lot easier to turn your paper than it is to turn your scissors. Your scissors have one job and that's just to open close. That other hand should be for turning your paper. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the legs. Of course, there's other ways to make animal sculptures too, but this is just one way. Okay, there we go. So he's cut out. Oh, my mane. I'm gonna go back and fringe my mane a little bit. Fringing is just opening and closing your scissors. And this box was not that hard to cut out. I'm pretty excited about that. But again, you know, if you need help, ask someone to help you cut it out because you don't want to cut yourself, okay. Right now, he looks like a duck. He looks like he's swimming on the top of the water. So we're gonna give him some legs, okay? Hopefully, you have another piece, and hopefully two, because you need to do this twice to make some legs. What you're gonna do to make the first set of legs in the front, because we know giraffes have four legs, is we're gonna do the first set with two legs and the second set with two legs. So I'm gonna do an upside down letter U and we need to make sure that they're kind of the same, the right kind of height, right? So we don't wanna give my little giraffe little bitty tiny legs so that he looks like a corgi walking around. And an upside down letter V is fine too. So something like that. It looks like a fat rainbow, right? I'll give him cute little toenails. This almost looks like it should be better for an elephant, but we'll see how it works. And you know, look, if you have a lot of boxes laying around and you mess up, who cares? Just grab another box, stick the rest in the recycling, and you're all good. So there's one set. Right now I'm just getting my parts ready. And I could trace these if I wanted my giraffe to have the same size legs on the front and the back. But actually their legs are the tiniest bit shorter in the back. So I know how tall these are and I wanna make this just the tiniest bit shorter. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Running legs are a little bit bigger up here. That's like the thigh, and then they go smaller at the ankle. And I'm thinking I might actually want to cut those a little bit better. I don't need to start over. I just need to change these a little bit. And if I do need to start over, who cares? Okay. Bending sometimes helps. So you can turn it around. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Get rid of that. And get rid of that. Okay, so how are we going to stick all this together? You might be thinking, well, I guess we could do glue. That's true, we could. But it might be tricky because we don't really have 
places to put it. And I don't know that this is gonna work too well. And it also might look really weird. It looks like my giraffe is trying to put on some pants. Okay, we are gonna use those slits, not slots, but slits, okay? And slits are on the edge. They're on the edge. A slot is in the middle. So let's draw real quick. If we were doing a slit on this circle, we would be cutting from the edge down a little bit. If we were doing a slot, we would have a circle, maybe fold it real quick, and that would be a slot. Okay, so we're gonna do slits. I want a slit on the front of his body and a slit on the back of his body. I'm also gonna do a slit on the top of his back legs. Don't cut through. And a slit on the top of his front legs. So now we're gonna see if we can stick these all together. So the slits go in together like that. And I'm gonna sniggle, sniggle, wiggle them in. Boom, there we go. Boop, hee hee. That's pretty cute. All right. Same on the back. All right, we're gonna make him stand up. Cool, okay. So if he's too tall, all you have to do is just trim off the legs just a little bit. Okay, I could, you know what I could have done with this tail? I could have made a tail separately out of a trash piece and made another slit and put it in here. So this is just one way that you can make animal cardboard sculptures, okay? These are pretty cool because you really are turning trash into treasure and we always love to do that. I'm thinking if you want to bend the legs, you still might be able to do that. And if you want to do a dot or two of glue, you probably can. So I'm gonna bend him up, bend him down. So he looks like he's running, bend him up, bend him down. Cool. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.